Good morning. It's nice to see you, Sarah. You as well. Thank you. Um, I'm Nan Arkwright. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist, and I've written a book called Mission Control, A Big Feelings Adventure. This is Joe Bauman, the illustrator of the book. And um, I know that you've written a couple of books, one on picky eaters and one on handwriting. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that, Sarah? Sure. Um, so I'm Sarah Appleman. I'm also a pediatric occupational therapist. And the book I wrote, um, Play With Your Food, which has recently come out, is addressing the much needed concerns with children who are picky eaters, as people say it. Um, I actually look at strictly the sensory uh, piece of it, and it provides a lot of good information. And what about the handwriting book? Oh, so I wrote that one with my... Uh, Alyssa Longhi, who's another pediatric OT when I was back in New York. And that one is a true multi-sensory uh, processing uh, handwriting curriculum that allows your children to partake in activities and connect. It's cute. It connects with animals so that uh, they're more likely to retain the information. So it's, it's a cute book too. Yeah, animals are winners for helping kids. Absolutely. And I love the ideas that you have in your book for picky eaters. It's a big thing. And oh, yeah. What's in common with your two books and the book that Joe and I have worked on together is that kids are having to do hard things. Things Absolutely. they don't want to start doing, things that they don't want to stop doing, or things that are like expected that are hard for them to do. So I was thinking there's three points, at least, that are in common to your books and, and Joe's and my book. And one of those is the meeting children where they are. So in your book about picky eaters, mm -hmm. um, what I would think that a place that would be a good place to meet kids, which is what I do with a little bit of feeding that I do with, with kids, yeah. is like just you meeting them where the fingers are, just hand hands in the food and learning about that. Absolutely. And same with ha handwriting, like getting their hands in there with manipulatives, and being able to use some concrete information supplies to help them learn about writing. Can you tell a little bit more about what you do? The one-year-old uh, baby that I work with and the mom was actually bringing in other points about how now there are suddenly psychologists and educators who are telling parents to let their kids get dirty. And us as therapists working at the sensory, that's the base, that's what we work on from the get-go. It's very important to introduce textures and temperatures and a variety of foods, and not only foods, but toys at a younger age to help the children get used to it. You know, we all as adults and people, if we don't like something, we avoid it, right? You know, and as adults, that's our choice. You know, we don't want to go to a gym, don't go. You don't want to eat your vegetable, don't eat. That, that's our, you know, as adults, we could do that. But we're telling our kids like, hey, you guys have to eat this stuff. And I found that when parents butt heads, it just becomes such a negative you know, connotation towards food. So getting them to play and not necessarily forcing them to eat, whether it's meal prep or a sensory gym or things, helps the child more willingly to then eat the food. So it's just a, a more positive experience for everybody. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, anytime the parents and the child are butting heads, it's, it's a shift to play is really helpful. Absolutely, yeah. And same with handwriting, right? Yeah. So the handwriting, I found, again, like when we did this uh, years ago, we did a, you know, there's certain number of curriculum. And as you as a therapist, I'm sure you'll know, there's like the ones that are the go-to. And they're great. But there's a problem for children who have spatial awareness, visual perceptual skill def deficits, um, fine motor deficits. And so they're frustrated because when a teacher says start writing, it is the... Uh, crucial to have a multi-sensory approach because if a child doesn't understand top down, they're not, as spatial awareness, they're not going to understand when a teacher says start at the top and go down. Right. So through that book, it's like more fun where it's like start at the top of the bear's head and they all know what a head is and then go down to the feet. And so they know where your feet are. And so it, it's a different way to introduce letters and it's, it's fun for, for them. Much more meaningful to them to be right. able to relate to something like the bear's head and feet. I agree. Yeah. Right. And, and then as you know, as a therapist, you might do like for balloon exercises, right? Like balloon volleyball for eye hand coordination. Uh, so we write the B on big B, little B to practice. And then you hit the balloon. And then you have to say things that start with the letter B. 
Yeah. And then as you're hitting, so now you're multitasking and using, you know, language processing, uh, auditory processing, visual, like all those things combining and they all connect. So it just makes it make sense. They have more retention of uh, phonetics and understanding the language. So it, it's a, it took a long time to write that one. <laughs> so. I'm sure that whole experiential opportunity for them is so important, getting movement involved. Yeah. It really matters. So um, with the book that Joe and I've worked on together, um, do you want to show that page, Joe, where, sure. where um, the little boy in the story is having difficulty turning off the TV in time to go to mm -hmm. bed? Which is a huge problem for <laughs> a lot. Oh, yeah. And so he has a, a big upset and his mom meets him where he is, not where, oh, but it's late. You have to get up in the morning. Right, so this is yes, a page in the book that shows Joseph's mom helping him with his big feelings, meeting him right where he is. So you can see with her body language and his body language, how he's feeling at first and how he's able to calm down a little bit, bit by bit, until he's able to then start thinking about, oh, I took some deep breaths. I, I listened to my mom. I'm borrowing her calm. I can do this. And so she's helping him get to that place where he can do that. And Joe has some interesting information about the colors in the background. Yeah, I noticed them. They're beautiful and appropriate. Yeah, so yeah. he um, so he's angry, and we associate anger with red. And then as he is calming down, he, he calms down into uh, a, a kind of like the middle phase. And so it's a combination of the red and the blue. So it's a little purple background. And now his his uh, gesture is echoing. Now he's listening to mom. Mom's getting a little bit closer. And then at the very bottom, now he's blue. So all the red is gone, not angry anymore. And now he's, you know, he's listening, smiling, and uh, ready to listen to mom. Yeah, I love, I love the illustration. I think it's so good. You can see the body language on both of them, which, you know, people forget a mom has to, or dad has to stay calm <laughs> when, you know, and it's, that is hard because we all have busy days or we have things that could go wrong with us and we have to hold it together and using that correct language and even from the crossed arms to like the uncrossed arms like all that body language is very good and i'm sure pretty much everyone who's ever worked with a kid has seen that <laughs> so yeah. you know yeah. it's a very well done very well illustrated you know great yeah. Yeah, I know. That's why Joe gets the big bucks. You know? <laughs> no, it's beautiful. And it's, it's, it's too, so yeah. he knows all of that as well. Um, no, I love it. Joe is multi-talented with technology and teaching and understanding kids and illustrating. So a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we want to go to another? Yeah, so the next idea... Um, that I think is in common to both of us is teaching kids about social emotional language. language. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, so like with picky eaters, mm -hmm. um, we can teach vocabulary, we can teach mindset with messages like when I tried new things, it helps my brain grow more flexibly, flexible. Or with, for handwriting, teaching the brain, um, teaching about the brain, how it was about stress and everything like that. Um, right. We can teach lang language like when I use strategies to control my big feelings, I can solve problems. And that was kind of what th my story is a lot about. But even that uh, visual that Joe just showed shows yeah. the same idea. So do you want to tell more like what do you what kind of messaging or language do you use with kids to help them with their big feelings around feeding and writing? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you hit the nail on the head with that is that we have to a lot of parents when they do butt heads or when a kid's frustrating it's because they have the decreased capacity to verbalize and vocalize what they're feeling and if you acknowledge it and you say you understand rather than you can't do this you can't do because that just escalates and then that makes a parent more angry that makes a child more angry so i think that goes perfectly with what i write about is that there's not children aren't being malicious if they're avoided children aren't being you know, outwardly bad because they don't want to partake. It's why, why don't they want to do that? What What's going on that is limiting or upsetting them? So yeah, obviously you said turning off a TV. Well, yeah, they were enjoying TV. Now you're stopping that. And for my piece, it's 
uh, okay, now it's time to eat, but maybe it's the smell, maybe it's the visual, maybe it's the texture, and that causes them an unsettling re response, like a real response. So when I talk to parents and I say, before you do this activity, try warming their body up with this, because I like to prep for success mm -hmm. rather than failure, right? So, you know, for, for kids, it's like, here, eat these vegetables. And you know they hate vegetables. You know it's going to be a fight. Okay, well, let's play a game with the vegetables and make it more fun rather than being forced to sit and eat. And so that positive attitude, just like with yours, is acknowledgement, understanding, respect, a mutual respect. And I think they grow from that. Yeah, I've had a lot of parents tell me stories about how they sat at the dinner table until they fell asleep in their food because the parents right. said, you'll eat, you'll sit here until you eat this. And I just, and then what does that do? It just creates anxiety and stress yeah. unnecessarily. And memories know? they carry and share later in life. Right? I mean, they're going to have kids and there's going to be a whole cycle. So I don't, you know, you're at a restaurant and us working with kids, I always find that I could walk into the restaurant and I'm like, okay, that child's got sensory in that because we could see, right? We assess it and look at things very differently. Yeah. And it's interesting, the parents who bring their kid bag and they have therapy or this or that, you know, things, wiki stick, you know, stuff to entertain their kid rather than others who just give a phone and they could just watch a mm -hmm. video, right? right? Mm -hmm. So there's a time and a place. I'm not poo-pooing you know, technology, I think it's a wonderful thing, certain times, but forcing your kids to partake with like creativity, like here's two wiki sticks, make me a car, you know, like yeah. that requires such a level of intelligence and calming and self-regulation and creativity that they're going to use throughout their life. So, you know, I like bringing that. Those are all things that are mentioned in the book that Joe and I've worked on as well. And it's just a part of what how, how Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's wonderful because you're hitting things that every parent deals with. It's not like one in 10. It's every parent at certain time is going to, if not already, be dealing with those emotions. Right, no matter whether it's over picky eating or whether it's on handwriting, turning off the TV, stopping the video, anything. Like in with the book that I work with, I use it with all the kids I work with. And no matter the circumstances, it's a sibling rivalry issue, whatever it is, it's applicable. And that's what's great about the book is that it wouldn't, no matter what parents are trying to address, there's a way to help yes. using the book. And I don't know why it's so interesting now I don't know how we were raised and now how parents are raising kids. Like so many, I guess I try to think as parents often ask me that we're multitaskers, right? Like we have to balance work, play, our kids, our, our lives, but not many people are actively participating with like meal prep or cooking. It's, you know, fast food now with delivery. I mean, you could get your, your groceries delivered. I mean, which sometimes is great, don't get me wrong. But there's a whole sensory experience you miss when you have the loud stores and the, and the speakers and the colors of the food is very different than just having it delivered to your front door, right? So I'm sure you address that transition also, right? Like, like, dealing with being overwhelmed or overstimulated. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also um, the kids miss the opportunity to learn like where food comes from. Well, that's right. even if they go to the store, they don't learn exactly where it comes from, but but they get the experiences of finding out that these are green vegetables and the yellow, and the yellow peppers and just right. learning more about food options when they are actually in the store. Right, but you just said it. Like you may say, well, these apples, let's see where they're from. Oh, look, they're from, you know, California or they're from Florida or, you know, or let's go pick apples, you know, and that could instill a totally different experience if you talk to them and you say, oh, well, red apples, green apples, yellow, we could cut them up. That's something I like to do is cut up the different apples and have a taste test and see which one, take, go take votes and say, which one do you like the best? I mean, that's just a whole different experience than trying to get your kid to eat an apple, right? So I think I mean, that's that really also, important. That also gives you the opportunity to, to practice handwriting with them too, because they can make a little chart 
Absolutely. Red. And write the words like red, yellow, green. Yep. And yeah, so if you, there's so many ways to be creative. Exactly. And I think as therapists and, and working with kids, you are constantly challenging yourself and being more creative. Yeah. On One time, side. like, like, so when we're talking about um, different activities and I work with my, my PR person and I'm like, okay, she said, I need, let's say three TikToks. And so we'll sh this is a good topic. And then all of a sudden you start firing, mm -hmm. right? Like, well, we could do this, but wait, we could do that too. And it does create a, uh, a fun stimulation for us as adults to right. keep young and, and interactive and fun. So I, I, I love that. that. My team as well. We all have lots of ideas and just um, share it with each other and it just gives you more and more ideas. Oh yeah. It's actually my favorite part of working with Joe too. Oh, see? <laughs> that's, um, that's the best, I love it. So do you wanna show the next page, Joe, sure. from the book that um, talks about like giving kids language and, and helping them mm -hmm. with the big feelings. So one of the um, pages in the book, well, Joseph in the story has to battle that desire to continue to watch the TV, even though he knows his mom is expecting him to stop. And it's, so he goes into his imagination to figure out, how am I going to do this? And he has, uh, Joe has drawn it so that he acts out the, the battle inside himself until he comes to the point where his dog, who is really a stuffed dog, but in the story he comes alive and helps him imagine what he can do to solve the problem. So, so Gretchen, the dog, who's actually modeled after my niece's dog, who's a real dog, and, um, Joseph, and Gretchen helps him just like Joseph's mom helps him, but in the story, in his imagination, it's his dog who helps him. So Gretchen flies out of the rocket ship and comes to Robojo, which is uh, Joseph's avatar in his imagination. And she flips on the for willpower and the, the shield comes down Smart. so he can focus and not be hypnotized by the TV anymore. And the laser comes out of his head to help zap those hypno cables that are wrapped around him that keep him sort of hypnotized and incapable of moving forward and being able to do anything to help himself. So the willpower with the kids, I use this little light switch. It's really bright when I turn it on. Oh, cool. So it's just like the light switch on Robojo's head. So right. like, let's turn on the willpower so you can do this hard task. And kids will ask, so go to, I have a little toolbox here full of tools Thank like you. this to help kids do hard things. And so some kids will say, I got to go through the toolbox and find something to help me be able to do this. And this is one that's sometimes chosen. Like, I just need willpower because kids will say, I just have to decide to do it. Right. I know I have to. I know I have to do it. I'm just going to do it. When they get to that point, whether they're using willpower or some other strategy, then they're good to go and it gets done. But right. sometimes again, as we've been saying throughout this conversation is making it playful helps kids. So that's why I came up with a lot of playful ideas in my little toolbox. And Joe, you want to talk about no, I think it's very useful. Um, yeah, so the, um, let's see. So the shields that come down, that is the, did I call it a hitman shield? I don't think I did, but mm -hmm. I think that is just the flex. It's a part of the process of him getting back to uh, being back in control. So the shield comes down and it deflects the, uh, the hypno ray. So now he's in process of um, not being hypnotized anymore by what we considered basically devices or mm -hmm. not being in control of electronics or anything that would take him out of what he's supposed to be doing. And um, so then the willpower, I wish I would have done the other page where it explained what willpower oh, is. Yeah. But um, um, what was it called? I, I forget what it was called now. But will stands for, what was it? It is, yeah, wired immobilization liberator laser. So down here you see these hypno cables. So he's wired, he's immobilized. And so this willpower 
it, it liberates him. And so it snaps off the cables and now he can, the shields are down. He's not um, wrapped up in the cables anymore. And now he can be more in control. So it, everything's like a, a step. Yeah. It's a process. So, and then in the, on the next page after this, this is where he um, turns the switch off and he's able to turn it off on the hypno, um, what did I call it? Hypnotron. And then he's completely defeated the hypnozoids because now they have absolutely no control over them. <clears throat> so it's other, are representing that desire to keep watching the TV or whatever it is that's making it hard for kids to do what's expected. Right. Yeah, and that's a cool visualization, but also interpretation of what could be happening in their head, right? Like, that's very smart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, and then the third and last idea that I think is in common with both of ours is future thinking for kids. Like, can you see yourself imagining, can you imagine yourself being able to do a hard thing? So sometimes I have right. kids draw a picture of themselves doing that hard thing if they have a difficult time being able to think down the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in the book, actually, there's a little poster that says, tomorrow I'll be a day older, I'll be more practiced, and doing hard things will be just a little bit easier. And so kids seem to like that poster and like Oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. And so it's thinking about yourself in the future being successful. Yes. And and the feeling that goes along with that, like, I want to be able to do that, yes. Well, it's a very positive, you know, the whole thing is very positive. And that's what kids want. They don't want to have to feel sad or frustrated or nervous, you know. And by you empowering them with that positivity and literally giving them tools, you know, to, to help them is very smart. Do you guys have, like a suggested toolbox or an actual toolbox that you could sell with the book? Well, I, I have this and I, it is packed with things that are tools. Very to cool. Use. And yes, that's an um, idea that we're thinking about doing. Yeah, because if you came with the book with like a cute little thing that had like a starter thing and then you could always add to it. You could always add, um, you know, like sell starter kits for parents and then say new to mission control. And then you could even come out with stories that involve those tools directly. It would be super cool, like a, you know, a future. That's a really great idea. Yeah, I'm working on the descriptions. Like I have this little tool here for future thinking, like just binoculars. Yeah. It's like playing with it. Like, can you see those hypnozoids, the temptation down the road there? What are you going to do to keep that from being reality, can you picture, can you move it over here and get a new picture in your mind of you doing something instead of letting this happen where you're right. having a hard time using your willpower to do what's expected, can you reframe it and see a picture of yourself doing something different? Yeah, so you guys could even put posters on the wall, like you could print out from your book, illustr or make new ones that have the frustration sign and then see if they could go like almost like a scavenger hunt oh. and see if they could go find using it yeah. with the binoculars, you know? That's a really fun idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I, I'm very in that creative mode. So I'm like, <laughs> I'll just keep coming up with stuff for you guys. Like, <laughs> So on the website, thebadgesofpower.com, we do have a poster, the one that I mentioned, uh, that people can download for free. So if anybody's interested in that, just yeah, as that's an encouragement great. for their own child. Um, I was also thinking about with feeding, like sometimes having a goal for the child to have in their mind, like if they're wanting to be a swimmer, like let's build your body with right. foods that help you be a strong swimmer or with handwriting, like maybe you want to be an artist or a writer. Can you draw pictures and write a caption at the bottom of the picture to show what it's about? So those are ideas like trying to think of yourself in the future do you have more ideas like in your creative mode that you're in? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so some of the stuff that I do is like, I actually, so back way back when I had a facility with Hedda Calderon, which was called Pause for Peds. Um, and we utilize animal assisted therapy. And that's what stemmed for my, my handwriting and the curriculum because kids really connected. We had dogs, tortoises, lizards, 
Um, and it was a fantastic facility. Um, unfortunately, with like Hurricane Sandy and things, and it was just chaotic. I was like, and then I moved here to the West Coast. But um, some of that that we took in is I would take a picture. Let's say a child was scared to do something or scared of even the dog. You know, I've had kids, we use it as desensitization yeah. techniques. Mm -hmm. So if they were scared, they were little little dogs, like a Shih Tzu, Poodle Shih Tzu, very well trained, rigorous, very advanced degrees. Um, and <laughs> we would put them, let's say on the swing, and then the kid would want to go on the swing. Oh, yeah. And I would take a picture and then we would have them cut and glue. And if they were too young to write, they could look on for visual perception for hidden letters that they could peel and stick to write dog or their name. And then they would make books before they could, and then they would try handwriting whatever they could in it. Um, so things like that being very fun frozen i hear that oh, there you are okay so having um that that you know fun way to adapt it for the kids so like you said if you have a kid and you want them to be successful i would set it up you know for the handwriting book it would it's pre pre-writing skills right like we have them do movements to do okay you're all zookeepers you could pick your can you hear me yeah okay, okay there you are so they could pick zookeepers yeah okay cool so yeah they could be a boy or girl zookeeper and we practice putting on okay we have to put our hat on we have to button our shirt and put one leg at a time in our shirt and the gloves, right? And then we practice movements. So we do sweeping side to side, Cute. reaching up to get the bird and or feed them mm -hmm. uh, for crossing midline. So it's a fun curriculum. Um, and then in eating, it's the same thing. Like I bake with kids and I'm like, let's brush the egg wash from left to right or top to down, or let's roll out the dough and see what shapes we can make and have them trace it. So you could always incorporate whatever you want in whichever area you want to do. It's just being creative. So They're really great creative ideas. I love those. Yeah, I can imagine the kids loving to put on that zookeeper clothing. Oh yeah, and they even cut out, there's pieces that they could cut out and dress the zookeeper, uh -huh. uh, color it in. So that's all preparatory for this, the handwriting curriculum. And then, you know, all the animals are taking care of all the animals along the way. So then you could bring up facts. We always have like written facts about the animals. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a fun way to learn and it's all encompassing. Yeah, yeah, it sounds very clever. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I've looked at it um, and, and now I'm learning more and more. I, I think that I'm going to start recommending it to families to, for the fun, the playful part of it. Right, yep. And I can do the other part, but just to prep them as you're saying. And because a lot of times it is hard for parents to know what those preparatory steps are. Right. So um, that's great. I, I love that idea to, for me to start using that for the families. Yeah. So thanks for the idea. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Um, and then Joe, jo, do you want to show the, the next page and uh, how Joseph uses forward thinking, how his mom helps him think about what it would be like for him in the future so he can picture himself being successful so she's got him all oh, oh that's mine <laughs> got him all in bed and he's had a little help from his mom to learn about how his brain grew from the experience and she's just asking him like how do you want to feel tomorrow so there's his poster in his bed that i mentioned earlier mm -hmm. um, it, and she's just trying to encourage him and she's asking him how would you like to feel tomorrow? Would you like to be able to do hard things tomorrow when it's time to turn off the TV? And he's like, yeah, I would like to feel in charge of my big feelings. I'm a kid who can do that. So being able to make that statement, I'm a kid who can do hard things, yes, is so powerful. And the, um, and the face, you know, Joe's so great at drawing the, the facial expressions of the kids. And throughout the book, you can just talk about facial expressions even and how it's changed from how much he loved uh, what he was watching on TV 
to the big upset, to the calming, to his imagination, to learning from his mom about what happened in his body um, and how his how she helped him with the understanding of what he went through, gave him the language for it so that he could frame it in a way that's a positive learning experience rather than what I see a lot of times where kids take it on as a, a mistake that they made and they don't feel good about it. So I really want kids to feel good about, mm -hmm. I learned something from that and I can do it a little bit differently tomorrow. I might need still some help, but I can picture myself being successful tomorrow. So yeah, that's great. To get kids to feel like, and I found that through the work that I've been doing with the kids, that they do want to be just like Joseph. They relate to him all yeah. through the story, from the big feelings at the beginning to, yeah, I would like to feel that way. It would feel good to me. I would feel encouraged. So, um, Joe, do you want to tell more about the what you were thinking when you drew the page? Um, hmm. I think I was just following your lead, like <laughs> pretty much. Um, you know, that he's just encouraged and that um, the, the, a lot of pages that lead up to this page, at least it was just a, like a nice ending of what uh -huh. um, he's been able to, mom has been able to share with him and how he was, how he saw himself and how he kind of was able to figure it out. He was proud of himself that he was able to figure that out. Um, through his imagination and going on this big adventure. Um, and I like to just put like little Easter eggs into yeah. a lot of the pages. And so while he's sitting here listening to mom, because that's priority one, but he has his little toys in the back of his pillow. Yeah. That were that part of his imagination. So everything that he imagined in the story has something to do with something that he plays with in real life. Yeah, I love that. And then the dog that you used and the robot that represented him. And I think that's brilliant because, you know, there's other stories or things that you could do and yeah. incorporate those things. Yeah. And so when the book came out, um, uh, I, I'm really in like teaching the kids here at school how to, you know, think outside the box and like take a like take a look and see what's happening in the world and at that time yeah. um that's when um perseverance um rover landed on mars and it was a big deal and the kids had no clue like and so i wanted to do my little tribute to perseverance and nasa and all that so i put that like joseph drew it i wanted to show that joseph was into space and science and that kind of thing and he has a bigger imagination and we have like a little Easter egg for future books. And so we have the green dragon and the blue dragon, and those are going to be characters in a future book. So where his imagination takes him. So um, there's kind of peppered all the, all through the book, little things like that. Plus, I love that. You should get sponsored by NASA. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, you never know. You could say, wrote this book, this, that influenced me. You never know. That's right, that's right. Plus, I love the idea that the name of the landing with, of the <clears throat> rover was Perseverance because that's right. what we're talking about also. Right. Is being able to build that endurance yeah, and be able to, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I have a, a couple of tips, and I know you do too, Sarah, for how, in addition to what we've already talked about that might be helpful to, to families. I One of the things that I do with the kids I work with is try to get them to share their thoughts about yeah. their own successes. And so I have a recording from a little boy who told me um, what he was thinking when he had to do something hard. And he ends with a little encouragement for other kids. So Joe's going to share that recording. It is. Let's see. Where is it? I don't think it comes. Well, let's see. Maybe it will. Maybe not. So I think I should be able to play it right straight from... This top. And I have Sarah, tell me if you can hear this. 
I breathe when I'm crying and that makes me stop crying. And when I'm mad, I walk to my room. When I and when I breathe, my I use my gauntlet so it reminds me and I push that button and then it works. And sometimes I rem, I just remember to rock and to walk in my room and then and um sometimes I can de decide but it's hard but sometimes I can I have another button that says just do it. May I, maybe I can decide to just do it. And when I do that, I feel proud. And when you do that, you should feel proud too because you did something hard. Yeah, that's really good. Um, when he mentioned gauntlet in the, in the book, this is the gauntlet. So it's like Joseph's personal toolbox. And it has ideas on it like um, change something, try again, take a break, ask for help, breathe, use your words, make move, say I got this, um, pause, things like that. So yeah, Mark, Mark. Um, the kids, oh, that's another thing that uh, people who are listening might want to look at on my website, thebadgesofpower.com, because there's a <laughs> gauntlet that can be printed out, downloaded and printed out and kids can make their own one, color it, and put their own little tools on there. And in this box, I like to have kids tell what they would like. That's the future for the thinking. What would you like that future picture to look like? And um, I use the little rectangles on that gauntlet also to yeah. think about feeling words. Like what will it feel like when you do that? What, we, what do you want to feel like when you are able to do this hard thing? because you push the button on your gauntlet. Kids really, really love doing that. Oh, yeah. They think it's so much fun and they wear it around proudly and then they want one for their siblings. And um, it's really fun to see them do that. Well, it's a fun tool because not only is it visual, but then you're striking that, that technology and the imagination so that they're able to connect it and then produce an output, which is, you know, it's giving them the tools that they actually need to have a good outcome. And that's, that's very good. Yeah, because each kid, I have a long list of ideas that kids have given me about what they think would be helpful to them that I would never have thought of. Yeah. They're very creative. They know themselves. And some of the kids have even just drawn pictures. I mean, the squares are not very big, but they can draw pictures of things like, um, I think that some kids have done like a, micro, a magnifying glass. Like, I need to study this a little bit more. I need to focus in on this and figure out what's going on here. Lots of clever ideas that kids have come up with. Yeah, and then they can share those. You know, they sh you should have um, different ones that everybody's made. Yeah, we have that on our website also. On yeah, that's really good. Examples kids have done. Yeah, it's really fun to, to share those. And Because you never know who looks at that. And what that'll help which kid, you know, like ideas, like you said, that they've come very clever. So there might be a similar kid, you know, in Connecticut, and then someone who's in Hawaii, you never know who could, you know, relate to that. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a couple of other ideas I've done with kids to try to reinforce the messages, to get them to say it out loud, to narrate their mm -hmm. own experience, because I think there's a lot of value in that, and for them to own it like that. So one of the things that we've done, another picture, Joe, with the um, poster. Um, Joe and I did a book fair recently, and we made a poster of the picture, of the cover of the book. And then we cut out holes that one. for the kids to stand behind the picture, and then they could get their picture taken. And so I do this now with the kids in, in a therapy session. I'll let them, when they've done something that um, they would like to share about and post online, I let them go behind the, the big poster and look through the hole and then tell their story. So that's one of the ways that I try to help kids reinforce the message. And then one other idea is um, we made this for the book fair also. But I, when kids do something that I think relates to something on the stickers that we made relating to the book, I let them spin the spinner 
and then whatever sticker they land on, they get to have that. But sometimes I hand pick it um, because if it's like the hypnozoids down there at the bottom, the green alien looking things, um, if they've done a particularly good job of trying to resist the hypnozoids and do what's expected, because I know it was really, really hard for them, I might also give them that sticker to help them like, yeah, I defeated the hypnozoids because that's a big part of the story. So those are ideas that I'm using, um, how, ways I'm using the book to help kids, which I think anybody can use. Um, the most popular sticker is the rocket, sh rocket ship sticker. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but um, I know that you uh, have some pictures that you wanted to share also, Sarah, with ideas of things that people can do at home with around picky eating and other things. Yeah, so I could just go through those. Um pretty quickly. This was a very special day at the end of a 10 hour photo shoot for the book. He was. And okay, there you are. Okay. So <clears throat> this kid, um, had been a picky eater and at the end of this long photo shoot where I had kids coming in and out um he said he's not going to eat he's not going to eat it so I said you don't have to eat it I just need your help because I'm tired can you help with your dad you know open you're very good at pouring and mixing and he started to smell all of the smells so again I'm not forcing him to eat but it's it's being sauteed it's a sloppy joe <clears throat> and he put it up to his mouth for the picture and I a little bit dripped in his mouth right so he took a bite and another bite so his mom started crying like I started getting teared up because I said this is exactly the point of this book and about a week later I received a text like hi you know it's it's um his name is Eli so he's like it's Eli um using my mom's phone can you please give her the recipe because I want to make it again mm -hmm. and I'm like and that's what you do right so that's that picture is a very meaningful picture. Uh, the next one is of a little girl I work with uh, and we made handmade goop, right? So you're gonna have to tolerate that texture and look at it drip and look at the fingers and it's made with cornstarch, water, food coloring, you know, nothing that's difficult uh, that you could just have around your house. And you, she could squeeze it, roll it, let it drip, but the, it's also made out of uh, jello. So they could pick their color they want and it has a sensory smell. It smells very, you know, like strawberry. So she really, so now you're talking about physically tactile defense of children, kids with senses, with their sense of smell, and of course the vision of a pretty thing forming. Um, so you hit all of that. Um, the next picture is making, um, using a rolling pin and having to push and get that sensory feedback for kids with proprioceptive, low muscle tone. Uh, so we roll out pizza dough. So again, I tell parents, here's my pizza dough. You don't want it, go buy Trader Joe's has pizza dough. You're still getting that texture of flour and uh, the dough, rolling it out, pinching the crust for the pincer grass, right? Um, and I used to, I used this one um, for parents. Also, they could they could mim, uh, model like making rolling it out, putting the sauce, putting the cheese, and then using different vegetables to make faces. Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling sad? You know, and they could put eyebrows up or down out of peppers or olives or tomatoes. You know, just having a really good time with it, and uh, they could copy for visual perceptual skills or create their own. Um, so that's fun. And then they eat it and they think it's funny to eat for people. No, so. You can also do uh, pie crusts and you can do cookies. So it's, it's clever. Uh, the next one. Yeah, it's just, you could do so much. This is with apples and not wanting to get dirty, dipping the apple in different jams or chocolate syrup and making apple prints. So you could take it and you could see like her finger she was like it's dirty I'm like but you're cool you're fine like and she was you know and she continued to play with it um so you could cut the apple in half and then you could see the pretty print and you could put apples on a tree you could have them trace the letter a making starting at the top and really pushing down for that probe input at tactile so you could use that many ways 
Uh, the next picture is of a little boy. He's only like about 18 months here. You can see he still has his little diaper on. Um, and he's uh, lacing, he's using the book. He picked out this activity and he's got eye hand, bilateral skills, fine motor skills, visual perception, all of it to lace the Cheerios. And people could use Fruit Loops or color uh, Cheerios to do um, pattern recognition. Um, but this is an activity that actually has kept many children of all ages quite busy and entertained. Um, so yeah, I think that one's a, a very, and this is also in the book. Um, the next one, I talk a lot because there are kids who have problems focusing their eyes, which impact their ability to do fine motor skills or, or visual perceptual skills. So this book, uh, in this activity, I had him make blast off lemonade so he can make a rocket ship. Uh, and then it blasts off into space, you know, it's something cute. And then he uses uh, his hands and to squeeze and to pour the sugar and pour the water and then freeze it. And it not it also sends a increased attention because when it's cold and sour, those are alerting and you're using, the eyes are connected to the mouth, right? So if he's sucking on that pop, he's increasing his ability to focus. So it's just like a really fun, all encompassing. I tell parents when their kids having a hard time with uh, homework, do this, you know, have the eyes pop ready and it's homemade. So it's, it's you know, low calorie, low sugar. They have different ones. Um, the next picture is really sweet. It was sent to me from someone in North Carolina. Um, and again, a young child who loves the book and was inspired to copy the children in the book, uh, picked out the page and started to make homemade chicken nuggets instead of ordering out, right? So it tasted delicious. There's that sense of pride and accomplishment in uh, creating something not only they like, but their family enjoys. So, you know, you see everyone thanking you and saying, great job, oh, this is so yummy. Now this, you know, young child is, is feeding their family and just feels really good. So I, I love when I get pictures of kids participating in, uh, you know, the meal prep or actually cooking. It's just, it's such a great experience. And parents don't realize how simple things are, right? Like they could do a lot of things at home and you could start out easy, make spaghetti and, and you know, some meatballs or chicken nuggets or, you know, pizza. It's just fun. You know, yeah. it's, it's just a fun way to, to bond with your kid. And so, so important for the kids to be um, eating foods that help them grow physically, as well as be ready for activities, that require the focus and require the thinking that they need for school. And it seems to be such a challenge for so many of the children I work with. And yes. sometimes parents say, talk about the hangry. Uh, oh, yeah their days. And so to be able to have this resource for families is just invaluable. Well, I love how they both connect because you have a social emotional balance and then you have the sensory processing deficits and they go together because I tell parents all the time is if your child is a picky eater and not getting the proper digested, you know, it, it, they need proper breakdown, right? And nutrients for your body. It like think about if you eat very healthy and then you eat something that's not healthy, how that impacts you feel lethargic, your attention is down, it could affect your obviously digestion, but sleep. And then that's that vicious cycle. So you're expecting kids to be able to self regulate, but they're only eating chicken nuggets and you know, uh, french fries, right? Right, there's right. nothing great in that, you know most popular things so, <laughs> yeah. and that's you'll ask that literally it's like the dinosaur chicken nuggets and the french fries are what all because and then i look at it and i say how are they chewing how are they getting their their oral motor muscles because if they have weak muscles here or decreased probe they're not going to pick something that's crunchy that's that's a little harder to chew so you have to build those muscles up yeah. so there's a lot of different impacts on food and and how they're eating and what they're eating and why they're eating it but then how it affects their social emotional exactly it's all so interwoven every yes yeah. absolutely yeah 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 so sarah this has been such fun can you, i love all the ideas that you're sharing with me and i think that your books are fantastic and uh i know that people will want to be able to be in touch with you so can you give 
contact information? Oh yeah, sure. Um, so my uh, website, it's playwithyourfoodbook.com. And I also, just like you guys, I believe in helping people and just, you know, there's a lot of blogs that I wrote, uh, videos, uh, things like that. So on Instagram, it's also play with your food book. So it's just parents can go and download or, or look at ideas and concepts that might help them. Um, and then the book is available on Amazon. Great, great. Yeah. And I've mentioned our book a couple of times. Um, a Mission Control, A Big Feelings Adventure is also on Amazon. And the website is The Badges of Power. And just like you, lots of examples on there to help people like trigger their imagination as well. Oh, yeah. Thank and you. I think it's going to be useful because I'll be able to refer now the clients I work with on how better ways to use proper wording to have success and to have your child build that self-confidence, which is what we all want. We want our kids independent, happy, and confident, right? And I love how all three of those books really help build those skills and resiliency and growth mindset, skills, everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? And I love the illustrations, too. They work beautifully. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. He's very, very talented. Yeah. So thank you again so much for being um, part of this conversation. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was awesome. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.